Okay, welcome in everybody that's joining us. Um, this is our first live session of the two-day event. I'm Jessica Harry. I'm the ICA's Executive Director, and I'm so grateful um, for you all joining us. I'm super, super grateful for the New Music Weekend for their continued support of this event and all the hard work they do. Um, and for our panelists, we have a great two-day festival planned for you. So I hope that you're able to join a ton of these events. But just a reminder, if you have to duck out or you miss some things, it's going to be up on the YouTube channel as soon as I can get those videos edited and uploaded for you. So I'm going to turn it over to our first session here, um, Collaborative Partnership, The Birth of a New Piece. And I will let uh, Luke and Diago tell you about the, their work. And we'll have a few moments for questions toward the end there. If you have things, feel free to use the Q&A function and the chat. And uh, off we go. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, my name is Thiago Anselmo. I'm the visiting clarinet professor at Utah State University. I'm also the core artistic director of Kemi Ensemble, a chamber music group um, dedicated to promote the music of living composers. Um, Luke will introduce himself really quick, but I, I just want to point out what we're going to talk about today. It's just like collaborative partnership, right? So we are create a new piece for clarinet and electronics. And we are gonna go over like four principles, like initiating a collaboration, navigating uh, the creative process, funding the project and performer. But before that, Luke, you wanna introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your work? Hello everyone. I'm Luke Carlson, composer based in Southern Missouri. I teach at a small college uh, in Branson, Missouri. And originally from the West Coast, where I grew up, did my undergrad there, and then made my way to Texas, and then Philadelphia for my doctorate, and now I'm in the middle of the country. So I've been all over, and uh, been teaching for about seven years, and been composing and collaborating the whole time, and enjoying working with a lot of fantastic musicians. So it's a great honor to be here. I'm thrilled to share with Tiago about our piece. Yeah. So again, you guys can ask questions later. Um, I'm in a hotel, so kind of trick to see all the comments there. But uh, the first thing, how to initiate a collaboration, and I've been thinking about that, and I don't honestly, I don't think there's any like a specific way how to initiate it. Right? Luke and I uh, met um, in January when Kevin was doing a residency at his institution. And, you know, we never talked before and by like work. I really like his music. He has beautiful music. Um, and from there, like we stay like, I think three months without really talking to each other and then reach out, right? So I think the first thing I would point out and I would love to hear like uh, Luke also point of view, like, you know, if, if you're not a composer, a person you like the music, just reach out, like, you know, and use the opportunity for it. What does your experience look like? You have then been collaborate with performers or over like? You know, the, the relationship goes both ways. I've had musicians reach out to me and ask if we could collaborate and I've reached out to them. And I think that's great. I think it's healthy to go both ways. Uh, if it was always a composer begging <laughs> and pleading, you know, that would get old after a while. It's great to have musicians reach out and sh express interest in, you know, my music. And so I actually reached out to you, Tiago, because I'm embarking on this new plan of writing pieces for instruments, solo instruments and electronics. And the clarinet is such a fantastic instrument. And I thought there's nobody better than Tiago. So <laughs> I reached out to you and, uh, you know, kind of explained my interest in embarking on this project and you were really excited and I'm like, that's great. So I think we're both excited about the project and it helps to have musicians who are interested obviously in new music and have played new music before because there's a lot involved in that. I'm sure we'll cover some of that when we get to those later points, but uh, in terms of collaboration, I think it's just it's really important to always be meeting people, interacting with people that are in the new music world from ensembles, soloists, and just offering, if you're a composer, just offer to write a piece. I think 
Tiago, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, instrumentalists are often usually excited to have a composer express interest in writing for you or a group. I mean, would you agree with that? Totally. I mean, uh, I was super happy when you reach out. And I, I think that's the experience of many of the performers, right? I would say one important aspect, at least for me, and I think that in general is, is true, like, you know, just keep an open dialogue and be honest, right? If you if you know a composer or that maybe the music style in general is not quite what you like or you're not quite interested in explore that just let them know right and i think we can like later we are gonna int go into like the creative process because I, I think that's an important conversation and uh, as well i think another ex point for me in my experience work with compose like you know just have some expectations clear expectations at least say like hey when is possible for the music to be written and uh, we will talk about funding and <laughs> all those aspects, right? But uh, from a performance point of view, I would say just reach out because I I feel like composers also are quite open for, you know, to collaborate with performance. Like, uh, I still didn't have any experience that composers are like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything with this, right? Which, I mean, and it, if they did, it would, you know, what's the worst that they could, say it's like no i'm just too busy or i'm not interested so what yeah. i mean move on go to the next person it's not like it's gonna derail your career if somebody says no yeah and that's the other thing right like came in right now we're gonna work with a composer that we've been talking like for two years but the time was just not right right but now it's like okay things are yep. lined up so you know just keep that in mind as well yep. you're saying cool um Maybe we could move to the next step, which is something for me is fascinating as a performer, like the creative process of a composer. And I would like, I imagine like most of our audience today is like performers. So, and uh, for me as a performer, it's always a, a trick balance, how much input you talk with the composer, like I like this, I wanted this, or, you know, like, so you don't cross that line. So I would love Look, if you could talk about your creative process and like how you navigate that conversation with the performers, right? So we can get like an idea how to approach. It. Well, uh, I think it's it's funny because composers. Uh, I'm speaking for myself, but I think a lot of composers actually want more boundaries, more restrictions. So if you said, "I want a piece that's this long." I want it to have funky rhythms. I want it to be no higher than this note. You know, that those type of things. I want it to be in 4-4. Ridiculous stuff, right? That helps the composer immensely because it draws a boundary. You know, Stravinsky famously said, it's easier for me to write a piece if I have limitations. And so when a composer asks a performer, what would you like? And they're like, oh, I'll play anything. Uh, okay, uh, how long do you want? Oh, it can be as long as you want uh what style do you want in it oh your style i don't you know so actually those types of responses i think the performer thinks they're doing the composer a favor but you're actually giving me way more work because i have to do all of the kind of uh creative generation of these ideas so as a performer if a composer approaches you and you're interested in a specific style or you want something a certain way feel free to tell them and and if they're pushed back a little bit and they're like, well, I don't want to write a, a tango <laughs> or a, I don't want to write a jazz inspired thing. Then you can go back and forth and you can start to compromise. But I think that's really helpful for the composer to hit, hear that feedback. And um, I've just finished a big long collaboration with a percussionist and it was a very back and forth process. And he had a lot of input and I had a lot of like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. But then I got excited from that input and it ended up being a piece that we both had a lot of investment in and we had a lot of passion for. And so I, I encourage instrumentalists, if you're working with composers, share your opinions, share your thoughts. It's really helpful. Yeah. And I think that goes back to what we were 
spot in the beginning are being honest and like open dialogue. So that helps, right? Like, because again, yes. I experienced this before work with a composer that, uh, you know, I was not super interested in that uh, style and I was not doing any favor for the composer's music and for me, right? On that collaboration with the percussionists, like, could you maybe be a little more detailed? Like, what are some of the things you guys work together? And it was a little bit more of that conversation. Like, uh, it was any conflict, you know, like, I want to do this, but like, how do you navigate that? Because I think that also would be a yeah. good um, line up for like the performance. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're early on in our collaborative process. You know, we, I haven't shared much uh, of the piece yet because it's still early days. So we're probably going to go through some of the <laughs> the stuff that we're going to, I'm going to talk about, but yeah. So uh, his name is Diego, not Tiago, but Diego. So he's based in Mexico and we met online at a music festival that was supposed to be in person in, you know, 2020. And of course it got canceled because of COVID and he reached out to me. He heard some of my music during a presentation and he was really um, um, taken by it and he wanted to collaborate. And so we thought, oh, let's write a seven minute piece and we'll play it next year at the festival because uh, we're both going to be there in person. And then we both signed up and they had to cancel again because of, you know, COVID and all that. So then we thought, what do we do now? And so the piece at that point was just a short thing, but we started talking about what do we really want to do? Cause we have all this time freedom. And he mentioned some theatrical elements, you know, instead of just playing the percussion, what if I moved around on stage? What if I did some acting and I'm like, Whoa, I've never done that as a composer. I'm, are you sure you want to, but he was so passionate about it and it kind of fired me up. And so we came up with this concept together of, you know, he gets sucked into a video game and he's actually like a video game character. And so then it became this really fun, playful piece. And I would send him sketches and he would be like, oh, this is great. But what if I picked this mallet up and treated it like a sword and walked around? And I thought, well, I never thought of that. And so it was this constant back and forth all online, sharing it through Zoom Um and then, of course, blending it with electronics and figuring out all those complicated uh, things. And we spent a good two, two and a half years on this project. And the piece grew from a seven minute thing to a 40 minute, seven act concert length piece. And we just finished premiering it uh, in the last couple of weeks. I'm working on editing the video right now. And we just had so much fun building this massive story. And the reaction, I think, from the audience was really positive. But a lot of it came from Diego's personal um, thoughts and his desire to kind of blend visual elements, performance art, the music. And I was inspired by that. And so rarely were there issues where he was like, you know, this isn't working. I don't like it. It was usually pushing me to think more about what he could do as a performer, as opposed to here's some notes and rhythms, just play. Like, no, I can bring more to that. I can act, I can interact with the electronics. And uh, he was interested in doing that. And not everyone, it will be, right? I think some performers are like, don't make me do anything. Just, I wanna play and stand still. And that's fine too. So uh, just being willing on my part to take those comments that he had and those desires that he had and give him a piece that he was really excited about. I think that that was the main element in our collaboration and um, just sharing ideas and working it together. You know, I'll be honest, there were days where I'm like, wow, this is a lot. And I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, so there is a little bit of kind of a leap of faith. And I think that that part of the collaboration is, is healthy as well. It's like, you know, I trust the performer to make this crazy vision a reality. And if it falls flat, fine, we'll, we'll pick up the pieces and fix what we can. But if you're uptight and resistant and you're like, no, it has to be this way. And I don't want to take any risks. Then the music's going to be dull and it's going to be the same thing over and over. And, and that was the other thing we talked about is creating music. That's different. You know, we want something that the audience is going to experience that, 
they've never thought of before. And we were talking about it just the other night, like how risky that is. We put in two years plus and it's not a formulaic piece. It's not a standard piece. And we don't know how it's going to play out in front of the audience. So, you know, with our collaboration, I don't know how much risk we're going to be taking, but anytime you deal with electronics, there's risk. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's kind of a long explanation about that. But I think there's some points in there that are relevant. Yeah, and I, I think there's a great example when we I like the idea of partnership, right? Like, because then you're really collaborating together. It's not just like, oh, do this or do that. Like, we are really working together. Uh, one thing I really appreciate from the beginning when we start talking about like, okay, ideas, what do we want to do is what we're part of the electronics, right? And like that discussion, how much knowledge I have to deal with electronics, how much knowledge do you have, how we bring this to a performance uh, venue, right? How all those kind of challenge. And um, again, I would encourage everyone to keep uh, exploring those aspects when you're collaborating. Like, you know, like, again, being honest, being open about your concerns, your ideas, that will just make things work really well. I have a question for you, Luke, and maybe I think performance will have something similar with that, which is that idea. How much of, going back to that idea, how much of input, of talking, except, or you like to write the whole thing and then send to perform and work. Can we talk a little bit about those two differences, right? Like, because we work a little bit like send the excerpts, see what you think, or you do that at the beginning of the composition or how you approach that aspect. Of it depends on the instrument. <laughs> so I am not a clarinetist, uh, my wife is. So I could ask her things. Um, I am a pianist and I've been writing a lot of piano music recently. And it's an interesting uh, thing because I can pretty much tell if it's playable or not. And I have a pretty good sense of that. And so for a piece like piano, I write the whole thing, finish it, send it to the pianist. And they might have some very small suggestions or do you really mean you want the pedal down here? So very small details, but with clarinet, um, I'm less certain. And so I'm, I think I'm probably going to be sending you more sketch material or chunks of pieces because I don't want to write stuff that's not playable. I don't want to write stuff that's really uncomfortable. I already sent you a, a short draft of just the beginning. So I'll go look through it. All of it was great, except for one spot that's like really awkward. And I'm like, ah, perfect. Cause I need to catch that now so that I don't make that mistake again later. And, you know, percussion, um, uh, pretty straightforward you know you hit it like this but then i have no concept for like physical space like how far he has to reach and is this setup going to work and i designed a diagram and put it in the score like here's where you put all the instruments i think it works and he's like no that doesn't work at all we have to do it this way and then we premiered the piece and he's like you know we have to do it this way so it's constantly shifting and a lot of it has to do with just familiarity so i think um sending the piece out in chunks doesn't hurt anything and it's maybe not my preferred way like i would like to just finish the whole thing but i think uh sending you sketches is going to be a good a good plan <laughs> again just keep those thoughts you know guys in your mind when you're com talking with composer right like in that process what works best for yeah. them cool um, we have a couple of minutes, so let's maybe go talk a, a little bit about funding and mm -hmm. the subject, which is an important aspect, right? Uh, in many ways, I feel both you and me are privileged because we are in university jobs, so there's a little more like options for grants to engage in those like um, projects. But I want to say, you know, reach out to composers. There, there are many ways you can raise money. Um, I know it's not easy, but like you can work around with the composer, right? Like you can create like fundraising aspect, consorting with other players. So 
um, as a composer, what is some of your approach or what some of the work you did with, you know, with performance around that aspect of it's so important because composers need to get money for their music. Please <laughs> pay the composers. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I think some composers are quite fortunate and can charge and, and people are willing to pay. But there are a lot of composers, me included, that, you know, those commission fees are just, you know, they're not as common. They're they're rare. And putting our music on is generally, and I think true for a lot of composers, even at universities, it's kind of a self-funded endeavor. And when I say self-funded, you know, institutional support, but also grant writing or, you know, um, things like that. So it's it's always, like you're saying, it's always hard work to get that money it's never an easy process but um, a couple of practical sort of uh, you know examples um, with the percussion piece we just did i don't know my institution helped support his trip so cover the flight things like that and give him a small honorarium but then we played at two other schools in the region and we reached out to them and we offered our concert and they agreed to you know help cover some of that cost and so it, it's kind of a opportunity if you're going to premiere a new piece maybe reach out to local schools and local institutions or uh, an art museum or a place that hosts certain events and see if they're interested and sometimes they would be like yes we'd love that and here's here's our fee and it's like you can earn some money doing this Sometimes it's the exact opposite. Like, hey, we'd love to have you, but this is our this is what it costs to rent the hall, and it's like, whoa, we can't afford that. But thanks anyway, you know. So, it, just ask. And I found that asking is very easy, and being rejected is common. But maybe ten percent of the time, somebody will be like, absolutely, and we'd love to have you, and there's there's money available. So, don't be shy. Ask. You know, I got rejected from probably five or six other schools for this most recent thing. No problem. That's fine. Their schedule didn't allow it or whatever. Um, grant writing. I've done a few. Uh, that's something I need to get better at. But it is, you know, it's busy work. It's you're typing a story. It's it's selling yourself. And some people are really good at that. Some people are um, hesitant to do that. But it's it's part of the job it's part of the process and we all as musicians in the 21st century composers or performers alike must develop that skill mm -hmm. i mean there are big organizations out there national endowment for the arts all these councils that are just sitting on piles of money looking for opportunities to give it away and they don't know about us we don't exist to them until we write the grant and make mm -hmm. ourselves known and it's just work we have to develop yeah yeah and I, and I want to point out as well like you know for those who are still not maybe at that level of you know of writing all those things but like don't let the money aspect be like a barrier to contact yes a, right because right. again there are many ways you can work around like uh recently came i had the experience like of reaching out for a composer say hey what about you do arrangement for us, you know, because it's the amount of money we have, but we want to pay you like fair amount. So we don't feel comfortable asking you to write a new piece for us. Um, and at the end, you know, like we work around numbers and the composer was like, no, I will write for you. So apply for all those, but like, don't let just the money right. be, a, right? And in the couple of minutes we have, like, I want to talk about, and that's specific about performers. Mm -hmm. Once you the music, make sure you're actually playing the music, right? Because this other thing, like, uh, you can't just play once. You need to really play more than, like, three times. So then it's on us, right? After all this process, um, really emphasize, like, the music to create that live, right? Uh, on the composer aspect, like, how that's helpful, what are some of your thoughts, and, you know, having different performance, how can change your music or your understanding of that? Well, I mean, the, the greatest honor a composer can have is 
interest from musicians you know like i like the piece and i want to play it more than once you know composers are cursed with that premiere and then never a second performance and my advice to composers is write good music that musicians like and my advice to performers is to find compositions that you like and play them <laughs> it's that simple yeah i mean it's that simple and sometimes we write a bad piece and nobody wants to hear it and that's fine uh but that shouldn't stop us from trying again to create that piece that people fall in love with. And uh, the only way you're going to know that is to just do it, go out and do it at whatever level you're at. If you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're a professional, just do it. And with that, even like, you know, don't be hanged so much on that first impression because even as a performer, we need some time to mature the music. Right. So, Let's make sure, like, even if your first reaction for the music is like, eh, give another try, give it maybe another yes. two. I experienced that playing music that I was like, eh, but at the end it was, you know, my performance was not the level that the music required. So as a performer, I would suggest people keep that in mind, you know, like the final result of all this work. You're saying with the percussion, it would be like, was two years with... With us, you know, we are planning to have the music done by March, maybe February, you know, and then it's a continuing process of it, right? right. Uh, look, I think we are out of time. If anyone has a question, uh, let me see if we can access that or, or we can write to Luke, you can find me online, we can like discuss any of other things. I don't know if there's questions or... I don't see any questions, but um, I think this is amazing content for everyone here. And again, I want to thank you both for this this session. If yeah. you joined late, I'm going to have this up on our YouTube channel shortly. Um, I've dropped the links for Luke and Tiago's uh, information on their website there. Please feel free to reach out on their contact pages there. Um, we have our next uh, YouTube session starting now. In about two minutes, I'm going to drop the link here in the chat and give you a second to follow that over. But thanks again. And we'll see you in just a minute on YouTube. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Thank Bye -bye. you very much.